So, now go on to something that is not centered, that is actually left aligned. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to open this. So this is the second one that I made, the second logo that I made. And it has this rather dark blob area here. I'm going to put this to the left um, and kind of make it come in a little bit into the margin here. Now let's just make sure that we are well outside of the box, which we are, but we can just move up a little bit to make sure. And now we come to here. Now before we come to here, actually, let me just show you the font here. Now what I used here is a font called Kona, which is a little bit reminiscent of the old Lubalin font um, avant-garde. Uh, has an interesting K. And so I want to find a font that is going to be adaptable to this. I can't use something that is similar to this because it would not be uh, adaptable. Uh, I can't use this one for sure, but I wouldn't even be able to use something that is kind of in that in this ballpark. It probably still wouldn't work. I would. I don't. I don't think I'm even going to bother to try. But since we have such a big dark area here, this address area here now is too weak in comparison to that. So we are probably going to need to make all of this a whole lot bolder. Now before we do that, let's make it left aligned, okay? Uh, the stroke we can forget about. Now uh, I'm going to remove these center uh, guides, but what I am going to do is I'm going to add a guide to here, to this, these two letters, the T and the E, right here and I'm going to do it from here and not from here because this is a much stronger reference point. So now let's come down to here. So this would actually oops, sorry, this would actually need to move over so that it is aligned with that oops, sorry picked the wrong guide here. This is the correct one. So that it is now actually aligned to here. So I'm using a completely different alignment now. I'm putting it in relationship to this. Now let's get back to here. What I think would look really good with that big dark cat up top, that would set up a good relationship to that, would be a bolder font and also one that is even more traditional, even more uh, adaptable. So, um, I, there's a number of them that I can use. However, I was looking at Archivo, and Archivo has a lot of uh, mediums and semi-bolds and so on and so forth, so I think Archivo is actually the one that I want to go with. So, let's just find it. Archivo condensed medium is like this and semi-bold is like this. Uh, let's start with medium, zoom out to see if this is giving us a strong enough uh, reference. Let's try uh, semi-bold. And yeah, look, when I make it semi-bold, it actually sets up a really good uh, relationship, a value relationship, a color relationship, or rather uh, a lightness relationship, not color, but lightness to this here. And it is differentiated enough from this font, it is quite different, so it establishes a contrast, but at the same time it's an adaptable font, so that works very nicely as well. Now let's just uh, go here 
and this here could probably become extra bold so that it's really darker but then also I think with a very bold font like this we could probably open up the kerning a bit and maybe even open up the leading a bit so if I just take these here these are 12 and if I make them 14 then there's still a, a bit more space between this and this and this is the the actual title of the company the name of the company so that should be a little bit separate did this now break apart too much is the leading too much when I look at it as a whole yes actually I think it is so let me just um, come back here and go down to 13 and see how that works now as you can see I'm being quite careful I'm going like one up one down you know I'm being I'm being very detail oriented now the point size I haven't changed at all since I started this whole tutorial because nine points is actually a pretty good size for a letterhead for for the font size of a letterhead so I, di I didn't play around with that at all okay so now one other thing I could do let me just bring back the guides uh, is now if we go back here and here now these things like I said in the beginning are get printed out and get put into binders so yes you have a copy on the computer but then you also want to have a regular printed version with the signature on it the wet signature it is called the slakimza in Turkish and that you want to hold for reference now when people are looking for one of these things inside one of these binders obviously the binder is going to be closed they're going to open it and then they're going to go, go like this from page to page to page to page and what they will see first is the right hand side of the page not the left hand side but the right hand side so when somebody in an office is going through a binder very very quickly they may also sometimes just sort of flip and then it's a good idea to have some kind of reference material that reminds this person of the company that the letter came from on the right hand side of the um, letterhead. Now this is not obligatory, you don't always have to do it, but it's a good idea to think about it. Now, I have this cat here. Now this cat actually comes from a pattern which is this one here so I can use another one of these cats which are exactly in the same style uh, and put that as a secondary visual element so if I just copy this it's already selected and come here and paste it and then reduce the size and bring it over here and then maybe just move it so that just a little bit of the face is visible and um, let's see I have it aligned with the bottom of the box maybe I should have it aligned with the um, let's see it's this one right here so if I just do this and then take the cat and align it with that then we also have a reference for the company on the right hand side I would actually probably make this smaller because it we don't want it to compete with the actual logo cat so just a tiny little thing here and you know what I realized that I actually forgot to do something here all the way from the beginning I forgot to put a date so I'm going to do that right now so Istanbul Tukus Kasım 
2021. And my big apologies about that. This is not something that I should have forgotten, but I did. Now, what you can do is you can put this date right in alignment to the bottom of the uh, recipient's address, in which case this would not be here, or you could also move it down. It could also get moved down. So you could also have it here. You couldn't have it up here. You couldn't have it above the address. It would either have to be uh, aligned to the bottom of it, or it could come down a little bit more, in which case the cat could still live here, or it would get aligned to here, in which case we might have to find another place for the cat, which could then be right here. So that's the first one. And then I have another one, which is very s similar to this one. It's this one here, actually. So I'm going to do something else with this one now. <coughs> now, um, before we go on to the other one, let me just add something here. Now, this line here really comes out. And normally we would probably not be doing that. However, in this case I think it's working, which is why I left it like that, and I just wanted to add that here uh, before I continue to the next one. Because this is such a long stretched out logo, and it also has one part that is coming out. So this here is kind of echoed in that. We, we have a kind of similar approach in that something is really stretching itself out, something is stretching itself out. So that is why I left it like that. Now with, the, with this n next one that I'm going to be doing, and let me um, actually close this cat right here, uh, I'm going to not be doing that. So now let's open the guides again, let's open the box again, and let's find a good place for this fellow here. And I think in this case he can live on the left hand side of the page. Now, I want to use this area here and I have the date, right? So another thing I can do with the date is I can actually also move it over here. That is perfectly acceptable provided you're not right on the fold. So let me bring it down here and then this and the signature would get moved down. And then we have a slightly different new kind of um, setup here. But it's one that is also acceptable. Now, let's take the address. And I'm not going to change the font here because I think the font uh, will work well, actually, before we commit ourselves, let's make sure. Now, this font here is kind of similar to, to the other one that I was using. It is also sort of similar to um, Avant-Garde, the, the Lubalin font. Um, it's a broken font, so for example, the T here doesn't have the other side of the stem. Um, the A doesn't have a crossbar and things like that. Oh, and incidentally, with both of these fonts, uh, there, there was no uh, Turkish uh, uh, characters, so I don't have the dots, which I didn't put in here. Normally, obviously, I would be making a dot uh, probably out of an I, and as a matter of fact, let me do that right now, so that you actually can see what I'm talking about. So I would just right. Hold on, why did this get over here? Hold on. So I would just write an U, bring it over here. Let's see. Oh, it has a cross dot. It, it has a round dot. The, the font has a round dot. 
So what I would probably do is I would probably um, rasterize this or vectorize it, get rid of this part here and then add this uh, dot separately. Or, of course, another thing I could do right now is I could just get the ellipse tool and make a little circle that is exactly that same uh, size and then bring it here. Actually it's looking a little bit too big so I would make it like so. Forget the eye. And then I would also put it here. But that was just an aside. That's not our actual topic right now. Now, does this font still work with this? That's our main issue here. Now, f the first thing we need to do here is we need to actually... Whoops. Go like this. And reduce it even more. And even more. And even more. Let's see. And then this would need to go down. We would need to get rid of the pica here. We would, whoops, need to get rid of that here. Now all of this uh, leading is now completely screwed up, so we would need to uh, fix that. So let's m make that 13. And now let's put that here, put a guide, and then take the it's, it's this one, and then bring that over here. Now, when I look at it like this, let me zoom out, this is now looking way, 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 way too big, right? So obviously, the, the font will have to change, but also the size will have to change. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to scale it down. Very easy to do. And, but then, it's going to say something like seven points, and this two seven points. Now that I would make an even seven not 7.11 or whatever that is. Now let's see. Now we have this here, the address. So obviously what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take both of these and let me see. Ooh, I seem to have a lot of stuff here but I should really be aligning this like so so that the bottom of this here is aligned to the bottom of that one over there. Now, let's see if we can't get a better font, because this font looks to me like as if it is too bold. Now we can stay with Archivo, But let's go to the lighter versions. And we can open this up a bit. And now this one we can make nice and bold. Like a semi maybe, or maybe even a full bold. Open it up a tick. And now it's actually looking like a decent little um, composition. And it's on the right hand side. And actually it can move further to the right, which will make it even better placed. So I can just move it all the way to the right hand side, to the right hand margin. So that would be now 
one way of doing it. But there are other ways of doing it, to which I will get to in just a second. Now, before we continue, I just want to point out one thing, which some of you may have even gotten confused about watching this so far. Now, why am I going for a lighter font here, and then when we get here, I'm using a darker font? So why is that? Now, the reason for that is that in this particular design, we have one item up here, and then we have one item down here, and they are separate. They are not a cluster, and they need to be balanced. We need to balance them. We need to give them more or less an equal prominence, um, and that is. And when we had this uh, in a light weight, then it wasn't really doing that balancing. But then when we come back here, let me f just find the other save as, because then I continue to do some other stuff here. When we come here, then what we have is a cluster. So we have a grouping of elements. So we have the logo, and then we have the address. And when we have a cluster, we need to establish a kind of hierarchy so that the cluster works. And in this situation, when the font was bold, then everything was becoming too equal within the cluster. So inside the cluster, we need to have some things be more prominent than others in order for the whole thing to come together in a good way which is why here the light font works better. And then when we go back here, the bold font works better, because this is not a cluster. It's two different elements. And they need to be equal. They need to be balanced. That is why. OK, so um, now let's continue. I need to find the other save as again, which is not so easy, because it is all grayed out. Let's see. There we go. Now, what else could we do here? Now, what another thing we could do is we could actually put this text on an angle. And sometimes that works very, very nicely as well. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, open it up a bit, like so. Then I'm going to put these on two lines again, so that we have something which is kind of like almost the equal uh, width. And then I'm actually going to rotate it. Now, let's zoom out a tad. Let's move the cat over. Let's take the address, bring it here. Move the cat back over. Now, in order for this to work, it does need a separator. So I'm going to add that now. So I have the top of the logo. Let me just add a guide to the bottom of the logo so that it's exactly that height. And here we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this about the same width as the font. So, like, almost like the letter I. So let's zoom in. It's about the same. Now, probably, we need to open this up a bit, like so. And then maybe the address needs to get rotated in the opposite direction. I don't know yet. I need to figure that out. Um, so that the bold stands by itself. The bold first line stands by itself. 
Now let's move the stroke over just a little bit and let's move the cat in just a little bit so that it's about the equal distance so that's another thing you could do you could combine you could make other kinds of combinations with different angles of text but o obviously never ever do something crazy like this not like this, right? Either vertical or horizontal, because it needs to get red. Now, another thing we could do is we could also take the text and the line, and we could separate it completely, and then a really good place to put it would be the left-hand margin. In which case, I would rotate the whole thing, like so, so that the line actually stays inside. Move it over a bit. Um, let's see, if we align it to the margin, would that be too low? Probably. Let me just look. What we would need in this type of a situation is we would need to move this over to the margin and then have this here and no, actually it's it work it's working very nicely, except I think the cat needs to come up a bit. Like so. So that's another thing you could do. So if I just go back, we can do it like this. Like this. So that would be one way of doing it. And then the other way of doing it would be like this. Okay, so that was just a small addition to what you can do with text angles. Again, no weird angles, only verticals and horizontals, please. And now let's look at one final thing, and then we'll be done with, with this tutorial. One little thing more about this, before I forget. Now, some of you who are observant may have wondered about why I have such a kerning problem here. Because I know I do, I'm aware of it, trust me. Now, I tried to tighten this, and I can only go so far, so far, but then I lose this nice alignment here with the N and the A. and. I looked at that and I wanted to figure out the trade-off. Is that a good thing to do or not? And I decided that it was better to leave it like this, so that I keep this alignment, which is why we have a kerning problem here. Uh, and I just wanted to point that out to you before we continue with the final one. So. That's this one here. And first let me zoom in and explain a little bit about what I did here. So I wanted to use this cat face, which I think is very funny, um, and combine it with the word Tekir Efendi and Akhtar, for which I used Helvetica, which is the queen of all fonts, and for Akhtar as well. But what happened is when I put these two things together, no matter what I did, um, where I placed the icon, it really wasn't working. It really wasn't coming together. So what I did is I added a line, which is this one right here. Um, but what I did is instead of adding a straight line, which wouldn't have worked either, I made a line which is exactly parallel to the slash. So let me just put it back in its place. Now the straight line wouldn't have worked because of the curve here, because this is a curve which is not really completely a curve. Um, and if I had had a straight line here, it just wouldn't have had uh, a good relationship to it. I could tell that right away. So I made the slash, and that's how that came together. Now I'm going to put this up here somewhere, I'm not going to put it close to here anywhere because 
um, it, it would be very, very difficult to align it on the left-hand side. I mean, even if I made it very small and the cat stayed inside the margin, it would still be quite difficult to align because you would need to align it to this margin and that just wouldn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go for the other end. And then I have the address right down here. So let me just actually bring this up here to fix it. Um, right now it's Archivo still. What I want to do is, first of all, I want to make the Selvetica because because of this relationship here, because this is Helvetica, so, uh, and Helvetica is such a pronounced, well-designed font, and it's a font that also a lot of people know, so I'm thinking that making this Helvetica is going to be the smartest thing to do. So, in fact, to have the same exact font uh, duplicated in the address as well, which is actually what I also did for the very first one, the central one, where I took Barlow, which was the font that I used for the word Akhtar, and wrote the address out of that. So here I'm going to do the same thing. I'm actually going to use Helvetica. I just want to see whether I want to go with the light, the Roman, um, not the condensed, I don't think. I think I want to stay exactly um, with the, uh, with the uh, weight up here. So let's take a look at this. I'm pretty sure it needs some more tightening because Helvetica is a font that actually looks very good when it's tightened and it may need some more leading so let's move this to like 13 because again Helvetica because it's such a well-designed font it has such a strong baseline and such a strong X height, which is actually quite high, um, it can uh, afford leading more so than uh, most other fonts. So I also increased the leading, and this here, the Tekir Fende, I can make. Uh, let's see, I can make it heavy, maybe even. What was the weight of this here? It was bold. So I can go for bold here as well, I suppose, to remain consistent. Now, let me just um, actually go to the background so that I can add a guide wherever the hell I like, because I want to add it right here at the T and the E, and then Here's the address, move that exactly to here. Now let's zoom out and let's do, 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 bring this down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this line and bring that down here as well. So that what we have is <coughs> we have a replication of this slash here, down here. This is aligned to here. And then, basically, um, we have ourselves our uh, letterhead. However, this thing is sticking out here, I just noticed. I think we can fix that. This is the postal code, so it should go next to um, the neighborhood anyway. And now it's a much nicer um, uh, break. Uh, so, there we go. So that would be number, what is it? It's number four, right? And that brings us to the end of the um, typography and alignment and etc. etc. tutorial. What we are going to do next is a whole new tutorial where I'm actually going to show you how to add color to these. Now we have a little bit of color here but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about substantially more color, and also this would actually let me do that. Right now, uh, what I would probably be doing with this is I would probably be, I already did it, but I would do it more. I would apply a smart filter to this and make this even lighter, like so. But 
I will get to all of that in the next tutorial. Oh, and one more thing that I just noticed. This slash here needs to come up just a bit so that it is actually centered with this text here. Like so. And then maybe it can just optically move in a little bit as well, which will kind of make us lose the, the exact alignment, but optically it'll be aligned because of this extension of the crossbar of the T. And that's it for this part of the tutorial. See you later!